This is part 2 of a short series about the civilization of Kemet. In the first part of this series, we presented a brief history of Kemet and exposed some of the lies spread on that topic by the fictional version of the history of that region. In this second part, we are going to talk about the peopling of Kemet. I know this part is the most controversial of all, though it shouldn't be. Why the controversy? Well, that's because for the past 200 years, the fictional version has successfully managed to convince many that having black people in a great ancient civilization such as Kemet is completely inconceivable, even when the civilization is located and originated on African soil. It is still hard for the fictional version to accept the reality that black people originated and developed a civilization of such grandiosity. Go figure why they think this way. <laughs> Anyway, in this video, we bring to you what the factual version of history says about the peopling of Kemet. So without further ado, let me introduce to you the peopling of Kemet. So the people of Kemet, who were they? What were they known for? What did they look like? These are some of the questions we are going to answer in this video. The people of Kemet were the most powerful people of the ancient world. And when I say powerful, it is not because they were especially fond of military conquests and such. No, in fact, the Kemites were known for not really having an army as such. For their wars, they preferred to hire mercenaries from either Asia or Kush and then they would mix in their own troops to form a proper army. So the Kemites were not powerful because they were especially fond of killing other peoples. They were powerful because of their great economy, also for their immense knowledge of the world. They were really known for having a blessed land. The Kemites were also known for being a very scientific people who knew mysteries that no other people on the planet knew at the time. This is evidenced by the fact that most ancient Greek philosophers went to study there and also regarded Kemet as a great source of knowledge of the natural world as well as the spiritual world. Speaking of the spiritual world, the Kemites were also known for their great spirituality and knowledge of the gods or God himself. For example, Herodotus tells us that most of the ancient world adopted the cult of Amon-Ra and that of Isis and Osiris. The Kemites were also known for being the most civilized kingdom of the ancient world. They were renowned for their great stone constructions such as the great pyramids of Giza and other great temples, their maritime knowledge, their sophisticated philosophy and science, their refined customs and so on. They were also renowned for their superior knowledge of science, mathematics, philosophy, astronomy and medicine, with the great genius Imhotep being deified by the ancient Greeks as the god of medicine Asclepius. The Kemites were really a great people. They were known for their optimistic attitude towards life and the world. They believed in the immortality of the soul. And just like their Kushite brothers, they too were known for living longer lives than most of the ancient world. Their society was very well organized. And since we speak of their social organization, Kemet was not a society that thrived on slave labor. This is a lie that was spread by people who could not conceive that a people would willingly come together to build enormous great stone structures such as the Great Pyramids of Giza. This belief stems from the fact that the ancestors of those people relied solely on slave labor for their great constructions. They thought it must have been the case for everyone. They were wrong. There is evidence that attests to the use of paid labor when constructing the pyramids. So that lie can no longer stand. The Kemites were not slavers. They did not thrive on slave labor. Stop spreading that lie. Thank you. There are many other facts about the Kemites that I would love to mention here. But there isn't enough time. We need to move on to the next point. So instead, I invite you to check out the description below for some interesting books on the Kemites. Right, 
Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the topic of contention, the population makeup of Kemet. The population makeup of Kemet has been, as stated in the intro, a controversial issue for only the past 200 years. Before that time, it was clear to all scholars and people that the population of Kemet was mostly made up of black Africans. I made a video on this shift in opinion a few months ago, so feel free to go check that video up here or down in the description. Right. Now, in order to set the record straight on the topic of the population makeup of Kemet, we first need to define certain key elements that are often brought up in this discussion. These elements are 1. The origin of the Kemites 2. The mixing element How and when it happened as well as to what degree it happened over the course of their history. 3. The racial element. Did the Kemites see race? If yes, how did they see it? How did they see themselves? 4. The evidence left by the Kemites and other ancient peoples that can help us determine their population makeup. So let's discuss these elements point by point, shall we? At the end of this, you will see that the fictional version has been deliberately misleading everyone on purpose. Let's go. 1. The Origin The fictional version would have everyone believe that the origin of Kemet is Eurasian, thus making the Kemites Eurasians, and therefore claim that they looked just like any Eurasian people today, just with a darker skin tone due to tanning from the sun. However, when one asks them to provide the archaeological evidence to support the claim that the Kemites came from Eurasia, they instead show us a dubious DNA study about haplogroups. <laughs> this shows that they have nothing archaeologically relevant to support their claim. No archaeological evidence, no ancient sources, no historical linguistic evidence, nothing. See, the fact is that the origin of Kemet is African, and there is a lot of evidence that supports this view. First, the Kemites' own history states that they originated further south in Africa, the ancestral land, Tanecher, the land of Punt, land of the gods, is located south of Tasseti, that is, around the Horn of Africa. This ancient history is supported by modern historical linguistics, by the way. The first king of the two lands was a king from Upper Kemet, not Lower Kemet. This means the first king of Kemet was coming from the south, and so were all the pharaohs who re-established order after each intermediate period as we saw in the previous video. They were all from Upper Kemet or even Tasseti. As we saw in the first part of this series, they never were from the north or from their supposed Eurasian land of origin. They were always from further south in Africa. Second, the entirety of the history of Kemet can be solely reconstructed thanks to the artifacts found in Upper Kemet, especially in regards to the very early history. Third, the originators of dynastic Kemet were descendants of people of the Nakta culture who were themselves descendants of Tasseti. In the first part, I mentioned the Aunu people and I said they were known to the Kemites as the first inhabitants of Kemet. Well, that theory is not true. Sorry, I spread something incorrect. Turns out you can't trust any of these past Egyptologists. Apparently, the Egyptologist Flinders Petrie made up the Aundo people so that he could create some evidence that supported a Eurasian origin. Well, we just need to know that the first to inhabit the region of Kemet were the Badarians, then the Nakta culture, then we go from the Nakta culture to dynastic Kemet. Just remember that, scrap the Aonu people. Thank you. Sorry, my bad. I didn't dig deep enough. Anyways, that's how we do science. We revise our findings and if they are not true, we change. That's it. If something is incorrect, I will come to correct it. I'm not here to spread lies. Anyways, let's continue. Fourth, historical linguistics also traces back the origin of the Kemetic language in Africa. This means that their language emerged on African soil and not Eurasia. If Eurasia was the homeland of the Kemites, can one explain why their language was born in Africa and descended from an older African language that was spoken by East Africans? Can you explain that conundrum without making up any fairy tales? 
I think not. Also, ancient historians tell us that the Kemites priests told them that their ancestors came from further south. Herodotus and Diodorus are sources here. Lastly, anthropometric studies show that the biological history of the Kemites emerged in Africa, with some studies stating that the Kemites' body proportions were super negroid. Yeah, they said that. This means that they were super adapted to a tropical climate. Other studies also state that the pre-dynastic Kemites cluster with Nubians, which led them to conclude that the Kemites most likely came from Nubia, or that they have a common origin further south in Africa. This comes to support historical linguistics, archaeological records, and ancient sources. So both archaeology, linguistics, and anthropometrics come to the conclusion that the Kemites emerged on African soil. Even ancient sources and Kemet's own history itself support this view. With this much evidence, there is no other conclusion to be made here. The Kemites originated in Africa. Now, what does this mean for their looks? Well, this means that they must have been black people. Remember, they were super negroid after all, meaning super adapted to tropical climate. And if you know something about natural adaptation, you can't be super adapted to a tropical climate with an olive skin. The Kemites biological history emerged on African soil in a tropical region, therefore their skin must have been very dark in complexion, their hair frizzy, and their skeletal structure warmly adapted. And this is actually how ancient sources consistently described them. <laughs> And yet they deny it. Exactly like every tropical African like the Bantu or the Nilotics, who are also super adapted to tropical climates, both their biological histories have emerged on the African continent in a tropical region. Black people. One cannot yield the same set of evidence supporting a Eurasian origin. Kemet's origin is African. It's undisputable. Its civilization emerged on African soil, and the people who established its dynastic period were black Africans who used Afrocoms. Just look at the screen. So if we only look at the origin of Kemet, the only conclusion to be made is that the Kemites must have been black Africans. Now, were they so for their entire 3,500 years old history? This question serves as a great segue into the second issue, the mixing element. Firstly, I would like to get this out of the way. Mixing did occur in Kemet, and this is undeniable. Now, the point of contention is in what manner and the meaning of it. And this is the question we are going to answer here with facts, not fairy tales as the fictional version so enjoys doing. A great example of the kind of fairy tales they so enjoy telling is the claim that the mixed population of Kemet had a majority Eurasian population, or that at the very least, close to half of the population was Eurasian, and this from the foundational period. This view is actually held by a minority of them, because they indirectly acknowledge the black African presence in light of the overwhelming evidence. Most of them actually claim that the Eurasians were the first to settle the Nile Valley and that black Africans came much later as slaves or migrants, making the Kemites a Eurasian people that later on mixed with a few black migrants, thus making the mixing in Kemet insignificant. They then further go on to claim that it is the Eurasian element that is solely responsible for civilization in the Nile Valley, and that the black African element is only due to slavery or later migrations. This they claim, but have no evidence to support it whatsoever. All this is fiction, guys. They have no worthwhile documentation that supports these views. We already saw how the population of Kemet has its origins in Africa, with several studies concluding that the origin of the civilization was endogamous, and that the population who created it were super adapted to a tropical climate. I do not see how a typical Eurasian fits the description of a super tropically adapted body, that is very dark skinned, frizzy haired, etc. See, mixing did occur in Kemet, but not in the way they would have you believe. 
During the foundational period of Kemet, evidence suggests that the population of Upper Kemet was mostly tropical African, as studies on pre-dynastic Nakada skeletons suggest. If any mixing occurred then, it must have been very minimal or insignificant, and it would have been between an already established black population and Eurasian migrants and wanderers, not the reverse. So the claim that Eurasians brought civilization to the Nile Valley is null. During the early dynastic period, both Upper Kemet and Lower Kemet must have been in majority Black African, with an emerging mixing population in Lower Kemet, and probably Upper Kemet, but still very minimal. Here is why that must have been the case. Lower Kemet was inhabited by small groups of wandering Eurasians before the dynastic period, while Upper Kemet was inhabited by a large group of Black Africans who were already well established in the region during the pre-dynastic period. These small groups of wandering Eurasians were then conquered and subdued by Menes or Narmer, the first pharaoh who came from Upper Kemet. Thus, Menes or Narmer must have brought some of his troops there to establish control over Lower Kemet, thus initiating a mixing of the populations. This is supported by anthropometric studies of that period, plus the statues and tomb paintings of that period also suggest that the large majority of the Kemites were black Africans. The same can be said for the Middle Kingdom as well, with lots of their pharaohs looking just like any regular Africans, with the darkest skin tones ever seen in Kemet. When we get to the New Kingdom, however, especially in the late period of the New Kingdom, we see an increasing number of the Eurasian element and more mixing, and this especially in Lower Kemet where Eurasian access was especially easy. Upper Kemet, even in the late period, remained strongly tropical African, studies say, and those studies are supported by ancient testimonies. This means we had a large black African population with a few mixed groups in both Lower and Upper Kemet, with a more mixed population in Lower Kemet and a somewhat significant Eurasian element. This conclusion is supported by ancient scholars' descriptions of the Kemites. We come to this conclusion specifically because most of the Greek scholars who went to Kemet, even Roman scholars who went to Kemet, unanimously described the Kemites as generally very dark-skinned and woolly-haired. The very fact that they are generalizing the Kemites as very dark-skinned and woolly-haired means that the majority must have been Black African, because who else do you know in this world that has very dark skin and woolly hair in that region? Mind you, these Greek descriptions are from the late period of the New Kingdom. This is also consistent with what we see on most of their paintings and statues, by the way. Also, there is a popular view of modern scholars that claims that the Kemites were North African types, that is, Amazigh Berbers. While this type was definitely present in Kemet, the evidence does not support that they were the majority. We have iconographical evidence that shows how the Kemites viewed other North Africans such as the Libyans. They drew them with a pale skin. They generalized the Libyan type as a pale-skinned man. If the Libyans and the Kemites were of the same complexion, one would see no difference in their representations, but we do, we do see a difference. So as you can see in this analysis, that bases itself on facts such as Kemet's African origin, ancient sources, anthropometric studies, and Kemet's iconography, we come to the conclusions that 1. The mixing occurred between established Black Africans and wandering Eurasians. 2. The mixing with Eurasians is not what brought civilization to Kemet. Kemet's civilization emerged as a product of its local population and not a group of elite migrants. This is supported by this study you can see on the screen. 3. The mixing in the early stages of Kemet's history happened to a lesser degree than what we are led to believe. 4. The mixed population falls into the tropical African family since Africans have the dominant gene, after all. <laughs> also to remain consistent with the current racial standards, eh? If Colin Kaepernick or Drake are black, then oh my god. If Colin Kaepernick or Drake are black, then so were the ancient mixed Kemites. Let's remain consistent. 
5. The mixing element proves that the majority of Kemites were black Africans. So as you can see, when we do a proper analysis of the mixing element of Kemet's population over the years, by taking account of its African origin, we can only come to the conclusion that they were in majority black Africans. This is consistent with ancient descriptions of their population and what we see on their tomb paintings. 3. The Racial Element Did the Kemites see race? Yes, they did. Paintings in the tombs of Seti I and Ramses III attest to this. Did the Kemites represent other Africans or Eurasians? Yes, they did. Then, were the Kemites very different from other Africans and more similar to Eurasians on those representations? The answer is simply no. Actually, many of the Kemites representations are very different from Eurasian representations, and this is both in Kemet and Eurasia. Take a look at this representation of two Eurasians in Kemet. One is a typical Asian man. As you can see, his skin is very pale and he is completely different to what a typical Kemite looks like. And on the other side, you can see a Greek, a typical European, completely different features. And when you go to Eurasia itself, it's the same thing, different features, different skin tones. Whereas the Kemites representations of other Africans are very similar to those of the Kemites themselves. And this is again in both Kemet and the rest of Africa further south. In fact, representations in Nubia, that is Taseti, are exactly the same as those of Kemet. This is in their facial features, skin complexions, and art style. The tomb paintings of Nubian pharaohs and those of the tomb of Hui in Kemet offer some great evidence here. Also, my latest video shows the striking similarities between the features on West African statues and those of Kemet. Again, this point of view also leads us to only one conclusion. The Kemites regarded themselves as black African people. Their iconography reveals that fact. Now, on to the next and last part of this contentious issue. 4. The set of evidence that helps us determine the population makeup of Kemet. There are certain key elements that help us determine the population of Kemet. These are 1. Ancient sources. Ancient sources are a great way to determine what a people looked like, as long as they can be trusted. They provide what historians call first hand sources, they were direct witnesses of past events. So in general, they can be trusted, and especially when it comes to giving a simple description of something. There are many ancient authors that gave us a physical description of the Kemites. Some notable ones are Achilles Statius, Aeschylus, Herodotus, Ammianus Marcellinus, Lucian of Samosata, and many others. All these authors consistently described the Kemites as black or very dark complexioned with woolly slash crinkly hair texture, that is the hair texture we find in Africa south of the Sahara. The fact that they even had to mention the hair texture shows that they must have found it very different from what they had ever encountered before. Anyway, all the ancient Greeks, for instance, used very strong terms to describe the darkness of the skin of the Kemites. Herodotus, for example, on two occasions used the term melanes to describe the skin of the Egyptians. One instance is when he was talking about the flooding of the Nile, he stated that the Egyptians have a black skin because of the hot sun. He used the term melanes, not melancroes. On a second occasion, he mentioned that the people of Greece named the dove black because she must have been an Egyptian, referring to the skin of the Egyptians as black again. Another one is Aeschylus in his suppliants. He states, I can see the Egyptians coming from afar with their black limbs. There are so many instances like these. These descriptions could not be used on a Eurasian people. Also, the very fact that we find many accounts of the Greeks mentioning the skin complexion of the Kemites shows that they found the complexion very unusual. In fact, there is an author in his story who claimed that the Egyptians had a very unusual complexion and then he goes further on to claim that that complexion was very dark, something that could not happen if they had been encountering it in Greece or or the Levant. Some people state that the Greeks saw everyone who was not as pale as they were as black. 
This is completely false. Those who say this do not present any scripture to support their statement, whereas we have many sources to support our statements. As a matter of fact, we even have an ancient source that gives a physical description of a Eurasian people of that time. This is in Strabo's Geographies. He states that people refer to certain Syrians as white Syrians. Then he goes on to say as if there were any black Syrians. So, their Strabo lets us know that the Syrians were white. This is inconsistent with the view that the Greeks considered everyone who was darker than them black. If you want to get all the ancient Greek and Roman descriptions of the Kemites, check out the description below for my video on this topic. In there, I give seven authors who described the Kemites as black or very dark complexioned. So with these ancient sources all claiming that the Kemites were black complexioned, we can only come to the conclusion that the majority of Kemet's population was black African. If the ancient writers had found a strong Eurasian population there instead of an African one, they would have been sure to note the mixed nature of the population, as Strabo did in his geographies when speaking of the population of Judea. But they didn't. Why? Because the majority were very dark complexioned Africans. None of the writers were under the impression that they had a very mixed population in front of them. Many of them just generalized the Kemites as black people in their own term. These ancient descriptions are also the reason why the factual version of the story comes to the conclusion that there has been a big population shift in Kemet, that and countless settler invasions and foreign occupation which often exiled the local population or mixed with them over the course of 2500 years, that will change a population. This is not only my opinion, Jean-François Champollion, the father of Egyptology, came to the same conclusion. The Count of Volney, a prominent French scholar who has been instituted in the French pantheon of scholars, came to the same conclusion when he visited Egypt. And many other brilliant scholars such as Shekant Diop also came to this very same conclusion. And many other modern brilliant scholars came to the same conclusion. The Kemites were black Africans. Let's move on to the next point. 2. The Statues and Paintings the statuary of Kemet in its large majority displays facial features that are typically African. These are full lips, wide nose, prognatism, brown skin, and frizzy slash woolly hair. It is the presence of all those features together that leads us to the conclusion that the Kemites were in the vast majority black Africans, since there is hardly any Eurasian that displays all those features at the same time unless they are mixed with Africans. This view is even more compelling when one compares the statues of Kemet and those of El Ife in West Africa. The similarities there are so evident as opposed to the stark contrast in phenotypes that the Kemite statues present when compared to those of Eurasia. And similarly, when Kemet's statuary is compared to that of Tasseti, it's the same thing with Eleife. The similarities are too striking to deny anything. Check out these two videos where I go in depth on this topic, link in the description below. Also, Kemet's paintings show us that the Kemites worked bare-chested under the hot sun of that region. Only a population with high amounts of melanin could do such a thing. Other melanin deficient populations living in such areas are always covering their entire body in order to protect it from the UV rays lest they catch cancer. And when they do not do this, like the Australian population which is mostly European today, they catch skin cancer at alarming levels. 52% of the Australian population will catch skin cancer due to UV rays by the time they are dead. That that's crazy. Half of the population will catch skin cancer because of the UV rays. Because they don't know that they must dress like Arabs in that region. They think they can just live like Africans who can just walk around bare chested in that hot sun, under that hot sun and be completely fine. I mean just look at how the Kemites dressed. 
on their tomb paintings, you see that most of their workers, if not all of their workers, are just wearing a cloth around the waist. Just like Africans living in tropical regions, under the hot sun, no need to protect their skin against the UV rays because they are naturally protected with melanin. I digress, let's move on to the next point. 3. The Linguistic Evidence as I stated previously, historical linguistics on the Kemetic language shows us that the language emerged on the African continent and that even their language family also emerged on the African continent. Therefore, the Kemites spoke an African language, not a Semitic language as the fictional version often likes to claim. This also leads us to the conclusion that the Kemites, just as their language, find their origins in Africa. For evidence on this, I refer you to Professor Christopher Eretz's lecture on the Africanity of Ancient Egypt. In there, he shows how the Kemetic language originated within the African continent and that its language family itself originated on the African continent, making the Kemites speakers of an African language, not a language that originated in Asia. Also, Dr. Teofilo Benga showed the genetic connection between Niger-Congo languages and the Kemetic language. This genetic link between them suggests that they once shared a common origin and culture in the past, which implies that they were once one people, Obenga says. Obenga also showed how the term of the Afro-Asiatic language family is a misleading term. Its name falsely implies that the language family has mixed origins. It is only because of one branch that later spread on the Asian continent that they decided to call it Afro-Asiatic, even though its origin had nothing to do with Asia in the first place. Although in the past they did believe that the origin of the Afro-Asiatic language family was Asian, but that theory has been debunked long ago. The origin of the language family is completely African. Furthermore, most of its languages also emerged in Africa. This Obenga had demonstrated during the Cairo Symposium, contradicting Dr. Greenberg's Semitic origin of the Afro-Asiatic language family, which has been debunked over the years and proved Obenga was right. 4. Anthropometric Studies Several anthropometric studies have attempted to determine the race or ethnicity of the people of Kemet. While many of them in the past made the Kemites out to be Eurasians, several recent studies have consistently exposed the fraudulent nature of the past studies of previous scholars on this subject. Because of racism and imperialism, many scholars in the past falsified their results in order to further their own agenda and fairy tales, and also to fit a certain narrative. I refer you to my video on the shift in opinion of modern scholarship during the 1800s. In there, I show you how racism and imperialism were the driving force behind the shift in opinion. In recent days, however, several anthropometric studies show that Kemet had a strong black African presence in every stage of its history, with some studies stating that the pre-dynastic Kemites were super negroid, or studies showing that most upper Kemites were simply tropical Africans. Many anthropometric studies show that the Kemites in many aspects cluster with tropical Africans, and this is in the old Middle and New Kingdom. The new scholars' unbiased findings are consistent with ancient descriptions, iconography, historical linguistics, and archaeological evidence, and also the ancients tell us that the Kemites were generally swarthy or very dark in complexion, Amianus Marcellinus. There was a Eurasian presence in Kemet, yes, studies also show this, but the black African presence was the majority, recent studies say. 5. DNA Evidence DNA evidence is great if done properly. DNA studies on the genotypes of the Kemites would tell us more about their physical appearance. However, this is hardly done. Instead, they constantly prefer to study haplotypes which are highly misleading 
and do not necessarily tell us about physical appearance of a population. This is what was done in the famous 2017 study by Nature that makes the Kemites out to be Levantine people. But that study is telling fairy tales. It is highly misleading because it bases its conclusions on false preconceived notions and haplotypes from one group in Lower Kemet only. Their conclusions are bogus. I discuss why that is in depth in this video here. Please check it in the description below. Another DNA study conducted on the Alu insertions of the Kemites relate them to people of East Africa in the Great Lakes. These Alu insertions are a type of genotype that help scientists give a sound assumption on migration patterns of peoples. These types of DNA studies are more reliable when it comes to ancestry and migration patterns of peoples. Alas, they are still hardly mentioned and rare performed. So when one studies the genotypes of the Kemites, their conclusions confirms what the Kemites told us themselves. That is, they came from further south in Africa, precisely East Africa. There was another study conducted by Dr. Shekhan Diop that also focused itself on phenotypes of the Kemites. This study was conducted on the skin of the Kemites. The study consisted of determining the amount of melanin contained in the mummies left by the Kemites. And at the end of his study, Dr. Shekhan Tidiop concluded that the Kemites must have been black because the amount of melanin found in the skin of their mummies was too high to entertain the idea of any Eurasian population. So that's for a study on the skin of the mummies. Do they want to do this again? No, they prefer to do haplogroup studies. Six the culture and religion of Kemet. The Kemetic culture is by most scholars admission an African culture. From Kemet's style of clothing, kingship rituals, kingship symbols of power, totemism and their social organization, all are exactly the same as those of other African cultures further south. An in-depth video on this topic will come in the near future. Also, Kemet's religion, or should I say cosmogony, is precisely the same as that of Southern African groups. In both cosmogonies, one can find the cult of ancestors, the same concept for the divine, the same philosophy of life, similarities in their pantheons and so many other similarities. From the cultural point of view, one can also only come to the conclusion that the Kemites were black Africans. That's very audacious, Mr. Garrett. I think of it in purely logical terms. <laughs> in conclusion, the people of Kemet were definitely African, and this is in their culture, language, history, rituals, as well as their racial makeup. And most importantly, both their biological and linguistic histories emerged on the African continent, which makes them black Africans and not Eurasians or Mediterranean as the fictional version states. The Kemites came from within the African continent, migrated towards the northeastern region, settled there and developed a mighty civilization. This is the true peopling of Kemet. And thus ends the second part of this short series about Kemet. I hope you enjoyed it. The next and last part will be on Kemet's great achievements. So stay tuned for that one too. And if you are still here, please like, share and comment. And please press the subscribe button. Come on, we're almost at 3000. Let's go. Peace. What?